All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today and letting us into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. This is a KISS-related podcast by the board for the board. We hope that you enjoy. We'd love you to support this show. Please like, follow, and subscribe to us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Your likes and subscription helps us to grow and attract interviews and content. So please retweet and share our posts. Your contributions are appreciated. Welcome to episode 430 of the Kiss Have You podcast. I wasn't going to do this show this week because I'm really busy on other days. Uh, but Andy pinged me and said, hey, I want to talk about what I've been up to. And when Andy calls, I'm like, hey, let's talk about what Andy's been up to. So going to do a show this week with Andy, the beast from the east. Uh, but I do want to give a shout out to Chris Friel. Happy birthday, man. Thanks for supporting the show. I uh, hope you had a great birthday the other day and have a great year. Andy, you have had a great weekend, but you also saw Ace recently before we get into that. So let's talk about what you've been up to because you've been East coast is happening, man. You guys have <laughs> lots of stuff. You've got these guys who actually do stuff on your coast. Unlike on the West coast where it's like pulling teeth to get events and to, you know, get anything going. Someone actually asked me, why aren't I promoting? Cause I'm an idiot. No way in hell I'm promoting anything. So what have you been up to? <laughs> Well, we saw what we saw not to mention what Ace a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. So uh, it was a makeup date from whatever date it was supposed to be. But uh, yeah, we saw uh, Ace at the Cabot Theater, and uh, no, when me and Kim went, we had like third row, and uh, you know, Ace is Ace. You know, <laughs> you know, uh, we had fun. That's all there is to it. I mean, uh, yes, I wish we changed the set list a little bit more, but uh, I would love the. Uh, more the Ace really solo stuff, not just the first solo album. I mean, other stuff like Off in Trouble Walking and, you know, anything, really. But, um, you know, we get the same set list. It's kind of like what Kiss is doing. Same thing. It ain't going to change. Yeah, you know what? He's, a- out, he's out there playing. And, you know, I got to yeah. hand, hand it to him that he is still getting up. There's some dates for Michigan were just announced this week. So I think Heartland. Uh, I mean, so he's still playing dates. There, there was a, a thread on the FAQ you know, bashing Richie the other day, you know, playing like a bar. I mean, come on, the guys out there playing, you know, and for any of these guys who aren't doing tours on the scale that Kiss is doing, or even, you know, lower level bands, they still get out there and do stuff. And I've got nothing but respect for them. Yeah, Ace's shows are often a matter of same set, different city. But you know what? You're still getting to see Ace, founding member of KISS. And he's still got a pretty good, you know, soundtrack, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, he had a cool t-shirt. In fact, you got me on this. I wonder where I threw it. Oh, uh, can I run and see if I can find it here for a second? I'll be right back. Go. Go. <laughs> Chase the, chase the squirrel, Andy. Chase the squirrel. Yeah, chase the squirrel's right. Oh, where did I put that awesome shirt? Now that you ask me, I should have been more prepared. I forgot all about the Ace thing. Isn't that pretty bad? That's horrendous. Oh, I have so many shirts, forget it. I'm not even going to bother at this point. Right, okay. Forget. All right, coming back to the show is uh, Andy Moyen, our former East Coast reporter. <laughs> You, you, got, you, you did. You threw me off. I wasn't prepared for that one. I already wasn't even thinking we were going to throw an ace in there. But, yeah, he had a real, it's got a really cool design on it. I went, oh, I think it's downstairs. Ready. Hey, I think I might uh, bring it it's on. A, the it's, really, it's a really cool design, and you'll be able to see it on eBay, no doubt. Or maybe if you uh, go to one of these new shows that have been announced, you'll be able to see it. Because Ace is still out there touring. Well, not touring. He's playing yep. show, intermittent shows here and there. Um, and that is better than nothing. None of them ever get seem to get across the Mississippi. Nothing in California, <laughs> which I think says an awful lot about Cali. Um, we don't have a lot of dates. We've got Wasp coming up, which is something good. Um, do want to give a shout out to the guys on Three Sides. Good interview with Blackie Lawless this week. If you have not checked it out, Blackie set some mistruths. True, from his perspective at least. And tells you a little bit about um, his history with Ace Frehley. Uh, so, you know, you want to know from the horse's mouth the story? Go and watch that and you'll get the story. And if you're going to be in Anaheim for the show, I'll be there. Don't know. I'll probably wear a thrash and die D shirt just to do something different. <laughs> uh, and then I'll be at the San Francisco show. 
but obviously you are, you are wearing a t-shirt that yeah. kind of explains what you got up to this past weekend so what was the event and uh how is our cat man uh cool i i um i really i had to be honest i didn't think i didn't know if i was going at first so i kind of jumped in late uh, a little later than most of the guys and gals that were already set to go so and uh kim had to work so i was really kind of like ah do i want to drive to six and a half hours to seven hours and that's without the traffic because you know you get to the new york area and i gotta get over to george washington bridge and la la la, la and oh, there's the giants were playing at home <laughs> so all that stuff on sunday to try to come home too so anyways uh, my buddy uh, Dan jumped in the car, the car with me. We left at uh, 3 a.m. on Friday morning. We got there about 9:30, and we couldn't stay at the hotel that the it was called the Showboat uh, because it was packed and sold out because it was a horicon. And uh, so we just stayed down the street. So uh, we got a place. It was all cool. It all worked. It was just two minute, three minute walk up the street, whatever it was. And uh, we got there about 9:30 and. I didn't want to know nothing, you know. I kind of wanted to be surprised like everybody else, so I had no idea what was going to happen. <laughs> and uh, I couldn't believe it. We get there. Uh, we roamed around a little bit. I tried to find some Kiss stuff. There's a hard rock now. It used to be, if you saw my video, um, I saw Kiss in 2004 and the Kiss in uh, Julian's favorite group, other favorite group called Poison. And uh, <laughs> we... Uh, that was one of the shows that they didn't record for instant live, wasn't it? The Atlantic City show that year, because it was not a live nation house. Yeah, I don't think so, because I went and uh, me and my uh, old buddy there, Dave, uh, rest in peace. He passed away a couple, about a month ago, more so. Uh, yeah, we went on that tour and we would buy, you know, he buy one night and I buy the other night, la, 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 stuff like that. So, so we all get a copy, if you know what I mean. So um, I went back. Uh, I was uh, showing Dan, uh, hey, Dan, this was like the Taj Mahal, Trump's Taj Mahal. This is where uh, we saw Kiss, and here's some photos. I had taken some photos right outside of the door, so I was trying to match them up and all that good stuff, so I did that. It was pretty fun, and Dan's just like, wow, that's pretty amazing that you can figure out where the doors, because everything's kind of changed except for the door and the spinning door, so that's the reason, and some of the brickwork on the ground. So did all that, and then uh, about 2 o'clock, uh, we went up to the rest of the, everybody's rooms. The rest of the uh, team cat man, we had their rooms and stuff. We're all kind of together. And uh, we knocked on the door, got up in, and uh, we were in uh, Colleen's room. And uh, everybody's wearing these cat man T-shirts. And I said, what? What is this? And then uh, somebody says, Andy, you're going to have to take your shirt off. Because you know me. I always wear a kiss shirt or whatever event shirt. That's that's my style. I'm not going to wear a plain shirt. It's just not no way. So I represent everywhere I go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, uh, Gigi comes in the door and says, hey, Andy, here you go. She throws me the shirt and says, you got to wear this today and tomorrow. And I'm like, it's all good. <laughs> so and then uh, next, you know, we uh, – uh, grab a, a bunch, grab a couple of cards. Jason Hernan, Jason Hernan was there. The first time I met him. Um, uh, who else? Oh my God, Mike, Mike McVeigh. His mom went. Colleen was there. Mark was there. Bill was there. I mean, so uh, we grabbed some cards, and uh, there was some. Uh, there was a guitar and a bass, but they were inside a case, so I didn't really know what they were. I just carried one. I had no idea what was in the cases. So after the fact, but uh, we went downstairs. We looked at the hall. Um, basically, you had to. There's two double doors. There's the table there that Dan and I would be. I would be the guy who basically, you know, my voice carries. A lot of people know me, so really, I do. Yeah, I do all the directions. My voice doesn't carry right. Nobody ever complains on Kiss FAQ that I oh, talk too loud. No, and and I mean no oh, one in sick. Miami hit the floor and ducked for cover when you were bellowing orders. No, <laughs> not at all, Andy. Not in the slightest. You're the softest spoken person I know. I my voice carries anyways, but then when you got to use it to tell lines of people what to do, you got to do it right. So, but it worked out well. But anyways, we'll go to that after. So then when you go through the, uh, you know, we would pass out the masks spray everybody's hands and then tell everybody this is the line for this this is the line for just photos don't come back till two o'clock because the photos if you just had a photo you gotta go to this side if you 
have a photo and a signature, you go to this side. So uh, it all worked out. And then you go through a hall, then you would take a right, go into another bigger room and add like 60 chairs so people could just chill out and this and that. And they had other volunteers there to Horicon that would help moving people up row by row when, every, when people went in to go see Peter. You know how it is. Move up row by row. And so everybody would keep their spot. So, but when we got there and we're setting everything up, uh, I was out front setting stuff up, getting stuff ready. I come in the back, I go around the curtain, and oh my, just unbelievable. I, I'm like, is this what I really think it is that's sitting there on the table? I couldn't believe it. I see green, I see fur, and I'm like, no. And Gigi said, Andy, I told you because Kim's first show that she ever saw was Dynasty you know, in 1979 in Portland, Maine. So I couldn't believe it. No one is why she wanted to tell me to make, so I could grab Kim out of work for the weekend, but Kim really couldn't because we're saving the vacation time for in October <clears throat> and for LA. So I couldn't believe it. And I'm like, there's a mannequin standing there, and next, you know, we're dressing him. We're dressing a mannequin with Peter Chris's original dynasty outfit. Or costume, whatever you may call it. Is is has Kim started talking to you again yet? <laughs> yes, I, I couldn't send her the photos right away because I felt so bad. I'm like, here I am smiling with the photo, with the with the stuff. And of course, they asked us not to post anything ahead of time until, you know, until the first rounds. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you don't want to ruin the surprise. It gets ruined quick enough as soon as people come in. But, you know, yeah, at, at least some people had the surprise. Yeah, as soon as, as soon as, so I didn't end up posting a lot of pictures until like Friday, technically Saturday morning at two through two thirty, three o'clock in the morning or three thirty in the morning. But uh, I couldn't believe it. I'm over there. There's a lot of silly pictures, holding them, holding the pieces, smelling them. You can smell the must, and I'm like, I'm enjoying this must. Oh my god, the love! <laughs> I couldn't believe it. The cat heads on the shoulders, the oh my god, the belt. You know, um, like you a know, year you, ago. You know you're making Kim cry again right now. <laughs> About six months ago, Gigi had sent me a text saying, hey, Andy, look what we found. And she sent me a photo. She goes, it looks a little bit, you know, it's old. What do you expect? Uh, the Dynasty belt. And I says, is this what I think it is? And she said, yep. And I'm like, oh, my God. And now they have the whole suit to go. I mean, it, I, I just the boots, everything. So if you are on my Facebook page, <laughs> check them out, man, because not only I took pictures, a lot of the guys we fooled around taking pictures because the rest of us i mean we're, we're just gawking at it <laughs> i mean hell this... you you want to talk about someone doing something special for the fans number one every time i've seen peter at one of these signings he spends so much time with the fans gives them individual attention you're not looking down at his head signing your stuff and him pushing it to the side and gesturing next you know, he interacts. They bring special stuff to make it special. It's not your average, everyday kind of normal kiss thing. It is, come on, you just imagine being that fan and walking into that room and seeing Peter's original Dynasty costume on a mannequin. I mean, how cool that must have been. How cool that must have been for you to be, you know, caressing it ever so gently i, I mean come on it you know no, ma no matter what anyone thinks of that era it's still you know it's still an important part of history i was kissing the boot and pete somebody even the other crew were laughing and i think hopefully somebody took a picture i think they did i, I don't care what people think because i'm telling you it, you, this is something that you grow up with. It, 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 you got posters on your wall, which I still do. I have men with makeup on my walls. I'm in my 50s. I still have guys with makeup on my wall. I don't care. I, this is the stuff you can only and, dream and people, of. People either are going to get it or they don't. And I just want to say something about Andy to people, just to, re to remind them. When I visited <laughs> New England last year on my research trip, we went to Bill O'Coin's grave marker. You know, into Bill O'Coin's family house and to the family business, you know, that's how much he loves and respects history. I mean, come on, I'm going to take you to the sites of Massachusetts. Well, here's Bill O'Coin's grave marker, you know, the family headstone. Um, 
you know, though, though he's scattered elsewhere, uh, clearly, but, you know, it's still his monument and here's his home. That's a deep respect of history. So, you know, if anyone appreciated, you know, seeing Peter's dynasty uh, costume, I'm sure it would have been Kim and she wasn't there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Kim. And I, and I and I hopefully and I bet you they will they'll do it again because they had uh, dynasty uh, poster boards. They had a couple of them, and you could take a picture uh, with the dynasty suit for a charity. So I mean, it, it's a double win. You know what I mean? They're doing it for a charity, and it's like what a class act that is. I mean, he's not double dinging you to make money. He's doing something good. He's paying it forward. I mean. The, the the cat man is honest the cat man oh wow i mean that just makes me yeah. me smile every time i hear something because it's not a gouge to get rip kiss fans off again and that happens so much you hear about it every single day you hear some st story of woe or you see someone offering it an outrageous rip off price here is something that you know something special for kiss fans to see and it's going to a good cause as well how cool uh, just super cool yeah, and uh, you know he like you had mentioned, and, and if you have been before Peter, he does take his take, blah, 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 does take his time and explain to everybody in the lines. If you've never been to see Peter, he takes his time, so it's going to be a little bit of time before you get in, but it's going to be real worth it. Who I explain to people even down the line, who wants somebody that maybe you've done Peter before and you understand, but some of the people who have never done it before, like. Would you want somebody just? It doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't have to be somebody you kiss with. It could be anybody that you you stand and wait for X amount of time or whatever time it is. Do you really want some the person to put their head down, sign the thing, and just throw it and barely look up at you, not not even say hello or hi or smile at you? I don't really understand it. Now, to me, those are the people who just basically want to get stuff signed so they can resell it. That's yeah. just my. Well, you, you know, and th there are some people who who clearly come in with a ton of stuff to get signed exactly for that. And you know what? It's better if he cycles through those signatures as fast as possible and gets them out of there because they're not interested in the moment. They're interested in the moments that come after. And I'm not going to offer a judgment on that, um, you know, but the faster you get rid of someone who's got a hundred things and, you know, it's their right to buy. And if they're able to do however many is allowed that's absolutely their right. But if that's all they're there for, get them done and get on to the one who wants to tell Peter thank you for the music or who Peter wants to you know, pick up on a conversation with, right? Yeah. Well, they did this too. Uh, anybody where we did the lines to is that anybody had a handicap or, you know what I mean, anybody that was, you know, any kind of handicap that you had, we went down the line, kept asking, if you have a handicap, uh, you're, you were going to be put to the front of the line, point blank. That's it. That was that was Peter and Gigi asked us to push anybody up that had a handicap. So that's what we did. And they go into the other room and that's what they do. So that's another classy thing that they do. So they didn't make people wait that needed help. And and those people are so happy that we did that for them. And the other people that wait were in line basically understood that and, and got got that. So that was another class thing that Peter GG and company, the team Catman do. That's really kind of cool too. So that's another way you got to look at stuff. So that's just so classy, man. I, I just got so very much respect for Peter and GG. It's just unbelievable. They work hard, especially GG. She really the backbone of really putting this stuff together, setting this stuff up. She wants everybody to have an awesome time and to get everything that they paid for. You know, I mean, even the pictures look look at the pictures the setup they had a they had a dw drum set up on a stage you know and then they had on the side they had a gene that gene gave to peter back in that time in the dynasty time it's a prototype of the axe guitar I mean, oh they, br bass. they brought that okay great yeah I, I do know about that bass and that is absolutely incredible is it like him hi kim <laughs> We're talking about Dynasty, and here we are. You said, I'm home. All right, I love you. Hi, Kim. <laughs> he said hi. <laughs> she can she can cry when you when she watches the show if she does. Yep. Yeah, no, I've heard about that bass, and that is super cool because you know identifying that 
for what it is as well would really be cool uh, to find out about. So, you know, from the historian in me, you know, I, yeah. I believe the story was that on the very last day when Peter was filming the Shandy video, uh, Gene had that there. I don't think it was used in the Shandy video. I don't yeah. think uh, the picture matched up with it. Uh, but Peter asked Gene if he could have it. And I think it, Gene says, something, what, you want this? And Peter's like, yeah, I want something to remember uh, the moment. But Peter's sentimental. Peter, Peter again, wears his heart on his sleeve um, from my yep. perspective. Uh, so Gene, now, gave, Gene gave him that. So that it's, was, it's that connected up. with that very last moment of the original, original kiss. The very, very last moment because the other guys didn't stick around. It was they finished filming that video and they were out of there I, I mean it wasn't the most comfortable of moments because you know the split had already happened um you know th there was pain and hurt on all sides but peter asked for that and gene gave it to him so you know a bit of respect to gene as well for 42 years ago and uh gifting that to peter and he still has it to this day and fans got to see that did they know just the importance of what they saw probably not and if they no, watch today, think, maybe maybe it'll make it all. More, were they allowed to hold it? No, I didn't even held it. That was that was dummy of me. I should have asked them because I know some of the other guys when they packed it, packed away, they picked it up every time the photo session was done. They put it away just to make sure. I never picked it up. I didn't even think about it. After things go by fast, you don't think about stuff when you just you know you just kind of go in, go and go. So, in, you, so know, you, you just miss touching a, a really mega artifact. I mean, not only I, a prototype, but something you. connected with that moment in Kistriani. I just you. thought I'd rub that in a little bit more. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That was going to bother me. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> it is too. You. Everybody's going to be laughing out there, but it is. It'll bother me for a minute because I did see some pictures of the other guys holding it. I'm like, wait a minute. Why didn't I do that? So yeah, but now, they probably didn't know what they were holding. So there you go. They did. They, I think that's how I got the story that night because I kind of knew. I'm like, oh, it's an axe, but it's not really that the one that you see on that. I don't know what they call the fake dynasty posters. It's not that one, you know. But anyways, so the next thing is there was a guitar on the right hand side. It was a Les Paul. It was uh, specially made for Peter. Oh, is it with the pearl inlays, Peter Chris? Yeah. Oh shit, man, that is so cool. <laughs> I didn't pick it up, but I, I took pictures of both things, like really far away and closer, and then really close. So I have a lot of pictures up on, you know, on that from that night. But yeah, I just I was like, huh, interesting. So uh, Gibson made Peter a special, you know, Les Paul for him. Cool, <laughs> right? Nothing wrong with that. No, I I mean that that's I I, uh, I think we've seen pictures of that as well, and it is you know how cool is that? I mean the drummer in, in Kiss. You know, how, how many instruments has he played with Kiss? Basically drums and um, I think he played a, a wood block. It's got a special name. I can't remember what it's called, um, but not in performance. Very cool. Yeah, and then, they, you know, they had the DW uh, drum set up and then they had the background where it looked like lights and green and thing. And that's basically, that's all Gigi because Gigi was the one who thought about doing the drum set for even the Creatures thing. You know, in Tennessee, there was her a whole idea. It was her idea. Drum it, set. Yep, it was it was her idea. They got the things in to execute her idea, but her idea, you know, and that says a lot about, you know, I read on the board some pretty nasty things that I end up deleting in many cases because people just don't know what the hell they're talking about in many cases. She comes up with an awful lot of good ideas that help make these experiences for fans meeting her husband and the original founding member of KISS, Peter Chris, fun and good value for money and different than what everyone else is doing. I mean, for a lot of the pictures to have just become separated by plexiglass in this age of social distancing where we do still have a, uh, you know health concerns involved, they've thought about a way of doing it that has the distance but also keeps it special and cool and interesting and fun I mean, three three letters, small word, such a big concept, fun photographs that you paid for. So, yeah, kudos even, to her. Uh, I think they, you know, they basically have now set the standard for social distant pictures, really. You know, <laughs> they have. So, 
I, I, I just like, wow, this is, this is, you know, so people are getting a lot of different things. It's just not like one thing, move on. It, you got different, you know, like I said, you, you get signatures with him, you get to speak to him, you get to talk, you talk to you back, you know. Um, and then, you know, it's cool too that the, these guys, these the team, you know, the team Catman and, and, you know, everybody that's there helping out is that after you get your stuff signed, it gets, it gets nicely placed on a table. And then you have volunteers sitting there doing this, drying all yep. day. They have all, well, I, I can't say always, but going back to, what is it, 2017, 2018, when he was out on the West Coast for um, the Los Angeles one, you know, they had a drying table there. And it, it, there was always, be careful when you roll it up and do, so it doesn't smoke, make sure, you know, always that little extra attention to detail rather than it's on a table and it's an assembly line move it smush it out of the way flip the burger next you know a total different treatment and approach to doing these and you can understand why people maybe get antsy in line on occasion but to know that that much care is going into the experience for it, you pl you've plunked down your hard-earned money and ev you're being respected yeah, it's, I, I think I think when some people were there, they might have been their first time, so they're a little nervous because, you know, uh, you know, say they had five things, and then Peter's signing one, and then the one gets taken away, but it's always taken away nicely. Everybody's holding, you know, it up like this. Basically, if it's just a thing, and everybody, because you know, they're fans. The people that are helping, doing that kind of stuff, are us. You know, the ones who do this, you know, want our stuff. If it was us. We'd want to be the same way. They pick it up like this. They go over to the table. They put it down. You know, they they got them like they got it all secured. You know, this is yours. They got one. And the other person will say, then this next person has five. So they have these, these cup things. And they put them down, and then and they put the cup thing after you know whatever after the five. One, two, three. Put the put them down. And I, it's just like all day, all night long, going like this, fanning. You know, that's a lot of work. I <laughs> say what you want. But if you're standing there for like 10 hours going like this, you know, doing the fantasy stuff to make everybody happy, you know what I mean? So that's another plus on that. So, and then, uh, you know, everybody's in good spirits. And I'm telling you, everybody's like, oh, that'd be awesome to do that. All it is work, you know what I mean? But it's work that, I don't know, we love to do. You know, and for me, man, it's so awesome. I mean, I'm not going to take for granted all this stuff. I'm one lucky guy. I don't know how this happens. You know, I mean, yes, they, some people say, oh, I got the right attitude for it. I this and that. Maybe I got lucky. I hit the right spot at the right time. But every time I've done something like this with Peter or Gigi, I'm the same way. You know what I mean? It's almost like this is my first time again. You know what I mean? It's always something different. I always get excited about it. And it's always cool to talk to a lot of people on the line. You know, how you doing? What's going up? I see people I haven't seen in a long time. See the people I have see you. We talk, now that I'm talking about people about the cruise, the kiss cruise and stuff, the bar crawl. You know, we're having these intercon, you know, conversations and stuff. So, you know, all this stuff is we're still lucky to have this stuff. I mean, you know, Peter's is going to be 77 in December. I mean, the guy, the other guys are, you know, ace of 70. The, the, you know, the, a lot of it. You don't have to do this. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but when I sign for my house, would you sign on a house for like, whatever you do? like 20 times, right? You sign the papers, sign, flip, sign the papers, flip, sign the papers. I'll tell you, after about 20 times, I'm sick of signing my name. <laughs> yes, Andy. I get sick of signing my name, too. <laughs> and, and, oh, and yeah, I right. have not I have not forgiven you yet. Yeah, it, it, for, for anybody who's watching this, if you're going to be in L.A., <laughs> I, my, event, my event that was supposed to be at the Crown Plaza in San Pedro is now moved down to Godmothers, which is about a quarter of a block. Mr. World Famous. Oh, no, no, right no. There. Oh, God. Oh, yes, Jesus. Yes, world. Joe books are all over the world. Is going to be in L.A. at Godmothers signing these books. He's, what, 40 hard copies of the 1973 to 1983 Kiss book. Oh, there it is. What did you got, 40 copies? 40 of the hard copies, you said? It, it, it's the 50th anniversary. No, there's 50. You know, and, oh, and, if, and if, if, if people have already asked me, how do I get a book already? You can get one and signed by the no. world famous author. Right and, and, and he'll be signing for me. 
<laughs> you wouldn't want to see my my signature, believe me. Yeah, it probably it probably looks about the same as mine. I do so little oh, writing, no. handwriting these days that I, I look like a toddler scribbling. No, no, that's that's true. God, Godmothers, and we'll talk about that a, a little bit more in a moment. I'll be there. Um, hopefully, I'll be. A, I'm going to be around in LA 26th through the 29th when I go down to Anaheim for the Wasp show. So I'm hoping there'll be some other opportunities to, you know, move these on to cruisers who want to save on postage. It's only going to be. Four 40 bucks, keeping everything as low priced as possible. I'll have some copies of the Aerosmith hardcover as well, as those are pretty heavy. I'm going to try and arrange for another guy who's selling books um, recently to come down as well. I won't say which because I haven't asked him yet uh, whether he's available. And then we, we have, we're going to have copies of both Goldmine available. Ooh, These are the, new, nice. the new issue with Kiss covers. One has the fearsome foursome on it i think there's like 60 copies of those available and the gene um abc and concert cover i might have some of the limited edition ones with the photo uh, only a couple of those uh but those will be available and i, I think I, I don't know what the pricing is going to be on those probably face um or, or close to maybe a little extra to cover you know costs but um certainly not ebay prices and you'll save on shipping on those as well so that that's all I'm, that's all i'm bringing down to la i'll have like three copies of odyssey hardcover three of the, the solo three of the crazy nights just very low quality those uh, are you know all kind of you know done their time in the market but just to have a few of those around so looking looking forward to it. hopefully there'll be other events uh down in that period as well um but don't know any details on that so godmothers is where it's going to be at least one night so october 28th the world famous julian will be there <laughs> i'll be a sidekick i'll be hanging around with, with with the wife and some uh oh yeah i got another, a good i uh, no, no I'll, I'll wait we, but we got more stuff playing so uh, that, that's with that. So, anyways, we can get back to where we were, I guess. <laughs> I just had to, you know, throw throw you under the gauntlet since you did about the dynasty about Kim. So now it's my my turn. Yeah, so, anyways, you, you got me back, and I know you're gonna now make sure you've got sharpies, aren't you? You're gonna bring sharpies in case I forget mine. Thank you. You just remind me. So now I'm gonna pack a bunch away and put them in a box and ship them. And now you just remind me I'm gonna get. So that's with that. So we'll and besides, you say we'll talk about this more. Well, we I got more coming. Uh, you know, if life throws you lemons, what do you do? You make lemonade out of it, and so that's what I had to do, and that's what I'm going to do. So, um, so uh, you know, I mean, also uh, at the uh, the Peter event, uh, Len, the, I always say Len's last name wrong. Delessio. Thank you. I think, and, I, and if I said it wrong, I would doubly apologize. <laughs> I, I I always say it wrong too, but he always has like like these killer shots. Now this one I never seen before. I love that. that. I love that. It's fa and look at Peter's signature on that. Look at look at yeah. Crap. Look at the makeup design. Look at the makeup design on that one. The, the things go down. He's got the little thing there. And yeah, look at the sparkly not, pearls not, as well. And not only that, that you can buy. I mean, this 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 is like twenty bucks, and this is good size. Not only that, Len signs it for you. He puts it in a piece of plastic, and he's even got an even like extra piece of cardboard to keep it you know nice because and, he's like, a professional unbelievable guy too him and but his wife are, you know what that, that's the difference between believable you know someone who puts i want to show you something <laughs> and uh just to show just to show me else well he is a, uh, i actually had this signed by peter too oh that's a, not one of the nice outtake photos I love this I'll take photo. So, got me to I'm just I'm just showing this as an example. This is a, a print from the photographer who did the album cover, and it, I think it's been printed on photo paper um, <laughs> because it's faded, where it's been exposed to sunlight, and you know it's it's fading like the memory of that project. Thank God. Uh. And I also, uh, my, my, my last thing, see, I didn't even get greedy. I, didn't, I don't even get, like, greedy, man. I just, like, maybe get a couple things time. But the Len one I had to get because all of a sudden I walked in and Len always has, you know, a bunch of, he had, like, three, six, nine. I think he had 12 prints that you could buy. But Len has, like, I don't know. Every time I see him at an expo 
for a horror expo or anything when he's there. He always has different stuff. It's wild. I, it's like, where do you come up with this stuff? Where do you find these negatives that you took all these awesome pictures? So uh, the last thing I had signed was, whoop, it's hard to see, the the Beth Solo thing that they sold in the 90s, I think in the 90s. So I took it apart so I could <laughs> have him sign it underneath the, on the thing. So that was pretty cool. And then uh, when they took your pictures, <clears throat> you had your pictures taken, they did them in, uh, they did them digital. So when you got done, you actually could go around the corner, go to the photo thing, see them, and then you could fix it. You could crop and all that, and then you could print them out right then and there. And if you really wanted to go back in line, that's how fast it was. You could get them, and then you could have them print out. So here was my there's, Yeah, there's the base. Oh, yeah, and the yeah. PC gets – oh, nice. Yep. <clears throat> and Peter looks good. I'm sorry. He yep. looks it, good. It, yeah, and it, it is funny, too, because I said, well, wait a minute. Before we take the picture, I'm going to put on my glasses. And he looked at me, what? And I turned around. I said, see, you got your glasses on? I got my glasses on. <laughs> you know, got to make silly moments out of stuff. And then afterwards, they took uh, – they said, hey, all the, t you know, Team Catman, get in together. Let's let's take one big giant photo of everybody that's helped out. And oh, all that. look, at, look at Hemden on his knees. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Tiny you know, in the background. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, so, it's uh, nice when you recognize half those faces and know that you've got, you know, passionate volunteers helping out because you wouldn't want grumpy bastards. You got to no. have people who care and also who yeah. are fans because, like you explained, with how, you know, they respect the items that they're taking to the drawing table and helping fans, you know, and, you know, while helping Peter. Obviously, there's a reason that they're there, and that's to help things go smoothly for the talent, which is Mr. Peter Chris. Um, yep. You know, they are fans, but they care about the whole process and all aspects of it. So that's really cool. You know, give you, you know, give you, as Paul Stanley would say, why don't you give yourself a round of applause, you know, because it, it <laughs> It is them, and if you see them out there when you're at one of these events, know that they're doing it because they care. Yeah, it's uh, you know it's it's just fun and stuff. And they also they gave us a you know laminate with our ooh our names on it. Ooh, well I showed my last name. Not that anybody could care less. So they see my. And then and then uh, we got these later. We forgot. Uh, I guess that they must have forgot. But uh, I'm gonna get, say your name is I don't never say your last name. Muchi Muchi Hi Muchi. I guess. Yeah, from Japan. She's got to be the biggest Peter Chris man in Japan, point blank. And she had sent these. She had made these. Oh, that's so cute. They're like, you know, little fan things so they could use them on the table. And she also uh, they had masks made, you know. Oh, she's fantastic. And she sent a box of munchies, like... I don't know. I explained it because you can't. We we weren't. You know, you can't. We can't read Japanese. None of us. So there's a box of munchies. So the second night we're all hanging around in Peter's and Gigi's <laughs> the the uh, <clears throat> their room and we're talking. Everybody's talking and relaxing. And the next thing we open the box. Gigi opens the box and they're like, hey, try these, try these. And so we're all tossing them around together. And my friend Dan, who was his first time, his first experience, is sitting there on the floor, like he was sitting on the floor because he didn't care. He's like, oh, I'm just gonna sort of. He's relaxing, he's chilling, he's listening to Peter because, you know, this is the ah moment. You know what I mean? This is the moments. These are the moments that you suck in. You're like, wow. And uh, he said, and then he says, Peter, Peter turns around and he goes, he goes, oh, I like these things. And Peter goes, oh, you like them? Takes them off the table and tosses them to him. And he's like, he's telling me after, he's like, Andy, I can't believe we're sitting here listening to Peter tell these silly stories or silly, good, cool stories. They weren't even mean or nasty. They were just really cool stories. And He's like, Peter Chris just threw me some munchies that I can't read, but I love them. From Japan. <laughs> From Mucci. You know, M Mucci. So, I mean, it was pretty funny. And then, uh, you know, I, I don't want to tell all the kinds of stories because I think it's personal. It's personal, you know. But uh, Peter did tell a story about uh, Sean Delaney when they were in Japan, uh, I think for the first time, that Sean Delaney wanted the dragon uh, tattoo on his back. And there were all kinds of ways they had to do it secretly and stuff like this. So Peter was telling the story how secretive it had to be back yes. in the day. It might be different now, but back in the day, it had to be secret, be done, you know. And they said they were doing it like, you know, they weren't using machines. They were using like things like a pop, 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 you know. So it was interesting. It was fun, cool stories that he was telling. And Peter was in like really 
good spirits. He was talking all night long. And at about 2.30 on Friday, basically, into Saturday, uh, a couple of the guys were like, like this in the room. And, uh, and at that point, somebody went like this. And I think, ah, I think it's time to go. It's 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. And we got to do this tomorrow. And I'll tell you, everybody got up. Everybody got breakfast. We had a little conversation uh, between the team captain and even, it, I mean, the, the people who worked it. He said, what can we do better? What, what Seriously, what can we make things go better from last night till today to even make it go smoother so everybody enjoys even just, you know what I mean, if we use any kinks in the thing. And, yeah, they had a dry station, but we made they made it longer now. So instead of maybe having two sets of people stuff on a table, now we had, you know, they had four and six. You know what I mean? So it could get stuff out. That was the thing that kind of, you know, would clog up. If somebody had like ten things, then, then oh, Every, all the table are taken, you know, you got to wait. So <clears throat> I think that would made it work out better in that way. And, you know, the other volunteers from the, the horror con too are really, really classy and awesome too. We got along with everybody. Everybody just clicked, you know, no attitudes, no, I'm better than you are. I've done this a million times or I haven't done this. And I think I'm better than you are. There was none of that stuff going on. So it was all good around. And, that, and that's what professionals do. I mean, when you care about I mean, I did that today at my job. I, I said, you know, we, we have an issue. What can we do better? You know, what can we do better to make it, you know, go smoother next time we have an issue? So, you know, that's what you do. And, you know, even when you had a good day, so what, what can we do? So it, it's nice as well that the event um, takes that attitude as well, because an event has branding. Peter Chris has branding. Uh you know, so you should care about it, not to value yourself. Yeah, let, let me uh, do just do this, too, is that, you know, think about it. Gigi, just like, wants everything to be really, really good. Because think about it. Even I would I would thought about that, right? When you go to have your picture taken, right, what is the first thing you do? You put it on social media and say, wow, look at this picture. I just had my picture pizza taken with Peter Chris. Look at how awesome that is, right? You got to get thumbs up. Say advertisement, awesome. free advertising. Yeah. yeah, but here's the catch, though. When you put up a picture that says, "Oh man, that's awesome, that's awesome," maybe you'll get say like ten thumbs up, and some people will say whatever, right? But as soon as you put something crappy up, what happens? It's a full out assault. You know? Oh, you dude, that stinks. Oh my god, I can't believe this. Blah blah blah. You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't blame it that you would want your photo and your stuff to be taken time, signed nicely, and uh, your photo be, be, like, so pro and so awesome looking that you want to do it again. No, you know what I mean? You know, that you could take it around the corner and basically have your photo printed out and then go back in line. and get, Because that's the last time I saw Peter, I had two things signed, a copy of Out of Control that I gave away to a, a charity thing and my copy of my 2003 meet and greet photo. That's the only thing I wanted signed. I didn't want it signed by any of the other three guys. I only wanted it signed by Peter because of his and my interaction uh, during the meet and greet, that he was so humble People and gracious have... and chatty and talkative and it was just one of the best experiences of my life so that's why it... i'll never put one i will never sully that photo by having any of the other guys sign it because that 2003 thing's all about me and peter <laughs> And there were there were people like coming out of the room. Hey, where do I get my photo photo in here? Around where the kiss bicycles were, because the kiss bike uh, guys were there. They cool. were at the expo. They were they were uh, promoting the new bike. It finally came out or whatever. I guess they finally brave. You know whatever they had to do, but finally popped. So they were there selling. I'm like, you know where the kiss bikes are? They're like, yep, take a right. Yep, straight down. Photo op. You did it and print it out. People are like running, printing it out, and coming right back in line and having it signed. It, it yeah. was that cool. And I, and I yep. hope this isn't true, but I hear there are some South American fans who still haven't received their photos from their meet and greets with Kiss. Oh, all right. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, South American. They've just finished in Australia. You know, wow. still haven't gotten their photos, allegedly. I cannot confirm that. I heard it on the Internet, so it must be true. So we had an awesome time. Everybody, we had some, you know, just silly times, and then we were packing everything up, and it, you know, at the end, we're packing stuff up, and then we're doing, I mean, we're all, you know, I'm like, look at this. I'm undressing the mannequin that has the dynasty. You know, I'm taking it and taking it apart, and I'm like, oh, oh, my God. I'm like, oh, yeah. You know what I mean? It's just, 
You know, I'm telling you again, we packed may, it up. May, like, maybe oh, if oh, you'd oh. spent less time caressing the green tassels, you would have held the base up for a photo. No, I think that head got packed <laughs> as soon as the photos were done anyway. So, the... <laughs> true. Yeah, okay. We'll, we'll see. I'll get you back in L.A., man. Hey, say, he'll sign your book. <laughs> the only time you're ever going to get it signed is right now. And he'll even date it <laughs> and put a smiley face. I'll even write, rise your heart on it if that's what you want. You know, <laughs> but you, uh, you, you buy a book, I'll write anything in it. It may have a typo or a misspelling, but I'll write anything for you. You say thanks a lot, Andy, in it, right? <laughs> but uh, after we were all done, we packed everything up. We were hanging around for a little while with, uh, you know, the, the group and stuff, having good time stories. And then the bunch of us who stayed, there was only, you know, some people had to go home and stuff like that. Uh, we stayed, we went to the Hard Rock. Had some what they call late dinner because it was weird. Everything on the boulevard, which is a huge there yeah, on the that shore, the Jersey Shore area, a huge boardwalk. Like it was Saturday night and everything closed at eleven. We're like, what? And everybody's like tired, you know, sore from standing up all day, the knees, the legs, ah, everything's like, oh, oh, we're all like kind of like zombieing. Uh, we end up at the Hot Rock. We ate. We ate, you know, just poking around having fun and stuff and uh and, and uh i'm gonna say hey michael mcveigh i'm ne never gonna let you let this down because he said that he not checked me with gene with the gene simmons base in the case hmm. that's all it's all so i gotta ne never forget that he because we were fooling around he's like he's like yeah look i turned around he goes Crank! and i'm like oh thanks a lot dude <laughs> always so be aware. you should know by now always be aware yeah, that's what I said. I said that because we were fooling around earlier because he was holding both of them. I'm like, oh, cup check. And he's like, don't do it. I'm like, I was just joking around. And then what happens, like, hours later, he just happens to have it, and he's walking with it. I turn around and swing. But he, oh, geez, thanks, Mike. <laughs> you only have yourself to blame. I know. We, we That's what I said. We had a good time. We laughed with each other. As a, Colleen's always the sport, and we, we just have fun. Colleen was like surrounded by bodyguards you know they like six guys <laughs> Jeez, we're like all the bodyguards around her and it's funny too because everybody's looking you know we have the cat man shirts on we're walking down the boulevard and people just kept looking what is up with the what's the cat man mean what's the chris mean in the back with the with the claw <laughs> it's hey, um, if, if you gotta ask you don't need to know that's right <laughs> we had a blast though you know and i'm uh i'm open I don't know. We'll see what's next. I, you know, I would love to do it again because I said same place, same time next weekend. They all looked at me. What are you nuts? And I'm like, yep, <laughs> let's do it. Hey, you know what? This year, I'm glad that Peter's gotten out, you know, and done some events on, on his own schedule. It's meant a world to the fans, um, you know, and and even though I'm not a big fan of the people who go in with masses of stuff to get signed and then sell it on you know there's an awful lot of people out there who can't make the trip who still can't travel can't a, a tra afford to travel for one reason or the other to go to these events and i mean it's a big world at the moment so it does i think give them an opportunity to get something and, and get a part of these events you know even if it's a little bit price gougy in my opinion but damn it looks good and those len photos those are just spectacular those are, are just unbelievable and you know those signatures are going to be nicely dried as well oh and then and then and then we're packing up cleaning up and i'm not thinking about it we're running you know kind of you know we're just moving to get done because now you know get late everybody wants to do the thing and hang out and then all of a sudden Gigi goes hey andy and i'm like what and she, I'm, you know, I'm, she's on the other side of the table and then picking up stuff and doing stuff, collecting stuff, bagging stuff, boxing and stuff and everything, whatever. And then she goes, hey, Andy, you know, I said, what? And she, she, she throws me. She throws me sticks. And I'm like, oh, what's this? And she goes, oh, these were from the photo session part two. And he, and he, uh, oh, yeah, and two. And then Peter played the drums a little bit every time he did a photo session. She just fooled around with them a little bit, you know. So, you know, he can still play. <laughs> of course he can still play. Anyone who says otherwise is an idiot and a liar. Yeah, yeah. and it's crazy, man. She's just like, oh, yeah, here, here. And he just throws them across on the table. And she goes, yeah, these are the ones that Peter played with. You can see the marks on them. And she goes, oh, yeah, and these are the ones he took the second, you know, the photo, the photo session with. And I'm like, oh, cool. 
you know, you know? What? that sort of thing couldn't go to someone better because it's going to be savored and enjoyed. Of course, I'm surprised I'm touching them now. I don't even want to touch them. I got to keep even in the little blue, you know, the Pro Mark, the Pro Mark, whatever it is. But yeah, red. You got a red Peter Chris with a with this little with the cross on. I'll probably get upside down, but there we go. There we go. Pretty cool. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. No, like I said, I, I don't know. I'm just one lucky guy. That's all. <laughs> live, live in the moment, savor it all, because as I, we as we know from the past few years, there there's special moments when you get to see the band members that you love or the bands that you love on stage. You know, just do it. You know, have no have no regrets because ev everything is you know got a time limit on it and, and please if you if you go to peter's thing if you ever go to peter's if you've never been or you've been you know it's going to take time that's all there is to it it's going to take time but it's worth it you know what i mean again it's so worth it to go see him and to, and to do his meet greets without a doubt and, and you know out of all the meet greets i've done or, or seen them guys is i'm telling not just because i team Catman. i'm serious i've done the ace one and seen paul gene Multiple times, this whole meet greet things like this. Peter's is the best, point blank. You know, it, it is point blank. It's been the best ones that I've seen and have been a part of. On both, I'm doing them, even when I wasn't helping out, even back then, it's, it's always been different, fun. I, I don't know. It's just it's very cool. I don't know. I love it. So, yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll echo that. P Peter's, you know, general public meet and greets are by far the very best of any member of KISS. Point blank. Um, you know, some of the instrument purchase one on ones are, are pretty cool, but for the ones where you line up with fellow fans and you just go and do them, by by far just exceptional. Um, yep. You know, you, you, you simply cannot beat them, I think, either for value, for money, or for the respect respect you know is such an important part of this that i you know again i've said it a few times throughout this that i felt <laughs> that they they treat the customer which ultimately what is what it is the fan with the great greatest respect possible and i think that comes back to them as the love from the fans which is also what it's about because why do why go see him otherwise unless you want to say thanks for the music peter love you you know all right, anything to add? Uh, you know, you know, there's there's one question sometimes, and I'll let people know that you ask, you can ask Peter the same question, he'll tell you the same answer. What is the greatest pop band in the world? The Beatles. What is the greatest rock band of all time? He says the Rolling Stones. Damn right. There you go. So those that's directly from Peter. You can ask him every time and you'll get the same answer on that one so it's just pretty cool it, it's so i don't know he has these little stories they don't even there's no he's got like the no bitterness you know he you know in the private you know there's no bitterness it's always fun silly stories so it, it's just i don't know it's surreal just sitting there with around him listening to him i mean literally on saturday night i was there was spaces every came and i came in a little bit later and there was space in there was space on the couch. Dave David was sitting on the end of the couch. Peter was sitting on the other couch. Everybody else was just kind of sitting around, standing around, sitting around and stuff. And they left a spot open next to him. And I'm like, I'm like, damn, my buddy. I'm like, damn, go, go sit next to Peter. No, 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 I'm fine on the floor. All right. And then I'm like, there's nowhere to sit. I need, I need to sit at that point. My knees are killing me. So next to you know, I'm sitting next to Peter, and me and Peter are just like, I'm, I'm sitting next to one of my rock and roll idols. That the guy, like I said, he's been on my walls forever. The music's in my brain forever. You know, sculpted my whole life. You know what I mean? It's like a, like a, I don't know. It really helped out in a lot of ways and stuff. And man, the awesome memories. And here I am sitting, and he's making jokes, and I'm making jokes, and where everybody's making jokes, and he's they're laughing at my accent. You know, <laughs> why don't you go back to Boston? He goes Boston. <laughs> you know, it, it's so funny. You know, it, it's just like wow, I can't believe this. You know, I, having a great time. With everybody, like, again, no attitudes, no I'm this, no I'm that. Just everybody's just going with the flow, chilling out. It, it was amazing. Again, you know what I mean? Again, that's all I can say. It's it's almost like even though I did it before, did the thing in Miami, it's all different, though. In the, in the, you know what I mean? I can't, I don't know, 
just like a little kid again. Every single time. It's always kind of, it's, might do the signature stuff is the same, but the other stuff is different. And seeing people and meeting fans again. I haven't seen these people in a long time. Seeing them again. Seeing new people that I'm going to meet on the Kiss Cruise and stuff. Or down in L.A. All this stuff is pretty cool. People go, hey, Andy, how's it going? Oh, I know you from Facebook. Blah, blah, blah. Let's, talk. Let's talk. How's the bar crawl going? I can't wait to see uh, Julian Gill at the you know, Godmother's Day. I want a book. You know, all this stuff. You know, it, it's crazy. You know, uh, but it's awesome. You know, Got because it. they're not spring chickens. And I love it. Let's yep. do it again. I got, I, I got one question for Peter if he happens yep. to hear about this or see it. All right, Peter, what is your favorite Beatles album and why? And the same for the Rolling Stones. And I'll even tell you mine to get you started. Beatles for sale. Transition between covering great stuff from American R&B and blues and starting to really emerge as singer-songwriters themselves. That's always been my favorite Beatles album. I'll, pl I'll press play on Beatles for Sale any day of the week. Rolling Stones is even easier. Beggar's Banquet. So, Peter, which are yours today? Because obviously it could change as well. They've got a, a cool new box set coming out, um, you know, very soon. And that's uh, the Beatles I'm talking about. So, Revolver. All right, that's it for now. So, we'll be back, I think, when uh, Andy has some more details and, and whatnot about uh, that day in L.A. Who knows? And hopefully I'll have some more. October the 28th right now, and I don't know where I'm going to be the 27th or the 26th. I'm driving down the 26th, so I'll only be around in the evening. And then I'm out on uh, the 29th morning, so... Um, I know there's uh, other events going on, shows with uh, comedians, concerts, slaughter headlining, and whatnot. So there are other things to do in L.A. while you're there. But if those aren't to your liking, I'm going to try and figure out something for the 27th evening um, if I'm not able to be there um, and, and see what happens. But 28th, I certainly know where I'm going to be that evening. So with me. <laughs> damn right. So for now, for Manny, myself, the whole KISS FAQ crew, the guys will be back on our regular time slot Thursday to do a show without me since I'm unavailable that night. We'll see you next time. Adios. Uh, Woohoo! <laughs>